and welcome to Sugar Spice Nice. My name is Shweta and in this video, I have just checked into Ahmedabad. I am here after so many years and I don't know if you guys remember or not, but one of my first few travel-based food series, like moving to a different city to explore the food, was in Ahmedabad. So I feel like life has come a long way since then. And today I'm here and I have just checked into the hotel. I'm staying at a hotel called Welcome Hotel by ITC. And the real reason why I booked this hotel was because it was on a good deal. Thankfully, they gave me an amazing room with an amazing view and also an amazing bathtub. So one thing I really like about this hotel is like this window sitting area. You can sit here, chill and downstairs, like the view that you get is of a garden view. And opposite is actually residential building. So that's not the most interesting, but I really like the sitting space. There's also a chair where you can sit down, chill and have some tea and stuff. And there are twin beds. You can also get this room in a king bed. That's what I think. The beds are nice and comfy there's also a big tv right opposite the bed but i don't think i'm going to be watching too much tv because i am supremely excited to go out and explore Ahmedabad. and whatever free time i get i usually end up sitting here and editing there's one really interesting thing in this room which is the bathroom let me show you so this is like a wardrobe bathroom getting ready closet kind of an area and there's no door i'm a little bummed about the fact that there's no door because actually there's like a huge bathtub over here and um, i would like to have a door to like maintain my privacy but i don't know hotels just don't get it i think and here there's a wardrobe and it's a very interesting wardrobe that i've seen like i've never really seen a glass door it kind of gives it a more spacious feel there's a safe and here we have the toiletries. So since this is an ITC brand hotel, there will obviously be ITC stuff, Fiyama Devils, and there is some other essentials. There's also a separate shower cubicle. So I like that everything is compartmentalized and right opposite the bathroom, there's also a full length mirror. So honestly, I thought Welcome Hotel by ITC is like a four star business hotel. And I was not expecting a bathtub wala room or I actually didn't expect a bathtub to be there in any of their rooms because I just didn't think it was that category but for the price at which I got the room having this sort of a bathroom experience is really good. I leave all of the website and price details and stuff in the description box below so check that out. One thing that caught my eye is this sanduk. Now I've used it to keep my luggage but I thought this was very interesting very vintage. Overall also the hotel is quite nice maybe I'll go look around and give you guys a tour as well later but for now I am very Ready to step out and start indulging in delicious Gujarati food in Ahmedabad. So let's do that. I'm heading to the Usmanpura river front and this is how it looks like. It's basically a garden and there's an entry fee for the garden, 10 rupees per person. And once you enter, you can roam around in the park itself, which is beautifully green. Or you can go down closer to the waterfront area where they also have boating and stuff. I'm going to be going ahead and trying out the boating. There are two options. One is the slower one like a cruise and the other one is a speed boat. Both cost 130 rupees and the boat ride is about 10 to 15 minutes. So I took the slow cruise and it was a very nice, slow, relaxing ride. Good time to do it. It wasn't too sunny and the waves were also not that violent, obviously. It's one of the few good relaxing things to enjoy when you're in Ahmedabad. So this was completely unplanned for me. I didn't know I'll be doing this boat ride, but I'm so glad I did. Just added a little bit of like new activity to the day. And now I am going to be heading ahead. I do want to visit a few food places around. So maybe we'll be going there next. Oh, 
Vishal ni garam garam jalebi. It's actually really really very hot right now. He made it fresh, and I remember coming to this place when I had filmed my last Ahmedabad series, and this place really stood out at the time. The jalebi is are perfectly crispy, and they don't overdo the orange color or, or the kesar in the chashni. Perfect. Mm. The jalebi is so good. I cannot even talk. I've also ordered a plate of fafda. This place is actually 52 years old. I can see the change since the last time I got here. They put AC and stuff. You cannot come to Ahmedabad and not come to this place for jalebi and fafda. Now the accompaniments to my jalebi are here, but. It's strange that I have only one jalebi left. I ate up the rest, and uh, this is a plate of fafda, and there's papaya, sambaro it's called, and this is curry. So the way they told me to eat it is a little bit of sambaro, dip it in the curry, and enjoy. Mm. Fafda are made fresh. They're nice and thin. They have a little flavoring from ajwain inside. Carom seeds. It's a little messy. There's no neat way to eat this, but you got to do what you got to do. So curry is technically unlimited. You get one entire jug. You can have as much as you want. One thing that I have to say about the texture of the fafda is that it's crunchy. Like when you're holding it and stuff, it's really crunchy. Even when you're biting it, but the minute it's in your mouth, it's like melt in your mouth. I don't know a better way to explain the texture, but it's just the right taste. On the right feel. One plate of fafda cost 105 rupees. One plate of jalebi cost 105 rupees. And I also had some tea, which cost 70 rupees each. The next place that I'm visiting is a place called Gwalia. Now, honestly, this was one of those stops where I just wanted to sit down, have a little bit of something to drink because there was a lot of walking that I'd done right before, and uh, I just felt like trying a pani puri here. The pani puri cost forty two rupees, which I thought was pretty good for an AC restaurant charge. And inside was a filling of potato and some chana and lots of jeera powder. Like I've never seen this level of jeera powder in, in any pani puri before. And this is the pani topped with a lot of bundi. This was an extremely heavy on fudina or mint and this is the sweet chutney extremely watery but it did add a good flavor After this the next stop is Das Khaman now I had no plans of going here but because it was right next to this place I thought let's just go and I actually picked up a parcel to enjoy later in the hotel so these are the yummies that I got from Das Khaman I picked up khandvi and I picked up sev khamni. They also had khaman, but somehow I didn't feel like eating khaman today because uh, sev khamni is the thing here. So let's just try it. Das khaman is another place which I visited on my last trip to Ahmedabad. It's really, really famous for its sev khamni, and it's again been around since very, very long time. This is the sev khamni. Let me put it out in a plate. So I have not put out the full quantity, but this is what the sev khamni looks like. It's essentially sev with the Khaman batter, which is slightly crushed. It also has a tempering. And this is the khanvi. There's a lot of garnish on top. It's difficult to see the khanvi pieces. You can see the chunkiness of these khanvi rolls. Wow, very, very delicate. This is a paste of gram flour, which is flavored and then rolled like that. Mm. I don't know whether I didn't realize this before or it's like hitting me again right now, but the use of sesame seeds in tempering is really big here. I feel like I don't see that that much in Mumbai, but I'm beginning to like that flavor. Trying the safe khamni. Mmm, this is the good stuff. Sweet. I don't know whether it's slightly garlicky flavor, but there is that little hint, and this is wow. And the bits of pomegranate in between, which add that little sourness. I think somehow even the batter kind of has it. If you love sweet and sour flavor, you're really going to enjoy safe khamni. Really a bag full of chutney, which I'm putting on the side a little bit. Mmm. I don't know what they make this chutney of, but this is like my most favorite to dip farsan into and have. And this you get at like a few stalls in Mumbai and they also do it well, but this place of course has a different feel. Now I'm going to be enjoying the rest of this safe khamni and khanvi and seeing you guys in a little bit. Good morning you guys, welcome to breakfast buffet. Now this was part of my stay package here. This is what the spread looks like. The spread is not that big but I would say it's quite a decent spread. So this is the section where you have all the fresh fruit, there are chopped watermelons, 
pineapples, then there's also banana and they also have fresh juices. There's an apple, beetroot and carrot juice. That's what I'm having. Now coming to the section which I found most interesting is local specialities. I love it when hotels try and include local food and special items of a particular place in their buffet itself. So here we have literally the whole Gujarati nasto. There's fafra, there's papaya sambharo. Then there are two types of dhoklas. One is a sandwich dhokla and the other is a masala dhokla. Then we have khaman and we also have khandvi and patra. Sadly, the only thing missing here is just Jalebi. That would have been like cherry on the cake if it was there in the buffet. Then there are other breakfast kind of items. Idlis, uttapams, dosa. Uttapams and dosa are in the live counter just like parathas. I tried the paratha. This is just an alu paratha and overall I would say it was pretty okay. The stuffing was good. Just some parts of it felt a bit not properly done but overall I would say it wasn't bad at all. We also had medu vada, chole kulche, hash browns and it's safe to say that the majority of the options in this breakfast were vegetarian. In fact, I think I just saw two non-vegetarian options. One is eggs and the other is sausages. Didn't really see much of that even in the made to order section. There's also a chiller section. It's literally a fridge with soft drinks, other juices, yogurt, flavored yogurt, the whole counter for bread and baked stuff. So there are different kinds of breads. You can toast them, use some jam or some kind of a preserve on them. And there are also cereals. And of course, there are tarts and pastries and muffins and stuff. Normally, I see more of the baked stuff in a breakfast buffet but this one just had like three or four options so two kinds of muffins vanilla and chocolate then there was a slice cake and there was a danish and a croissant i think the only section out of this entire buffet which i didn't really enjoy was this dessert section the cakes kind of looked and tasted like they were not completely properly baked you could feel that mealiness from the batter but all's well that ends well and it really did end well with chai i think they got their chai right good flavor not too heavy on milk pretty strong i would say and with a slight tinge of LIG. The seating space in their buffet area is pretty good. I feel like it's a newly done hotel. That is why everything is so like nice and tip top. Overall, I have to say I am really enjoying my stay here. So today actually I spent my day filming other content and I went to this really interesting lunch place, Gujarati Thali, so good. And if you guys want to check out that video, then make sure you let me know in the comments below and I'll share a link with you guys. After that, I spent my time shopping. So this is my entire haul from today like both of these beds are filled with things that i bought today first i'll show you stuff that i feel like you guys might be a little bit more interested in you cannot leave ahmedabad without actually going and getting farsan and khakra especially so this entire spread is about that the first thing that i got is serveda that's what i read in the menu of a place i found it very very similar to khichia and i got the one with the green chilies so two packets of these, but don't worry, everything is not for me. Then in terms of namkeen, I got some tikha gathya. This is some tomato safe. Whenever I see tomato safe, I just cannot keep it together. So I got this. Now one interesting thing that I saw here is this kothmir chiura. So this is that patla poha chiura, but with that kothmir flavor. And the first time I tried this was actually in Mahabaleshwar and ever since I've been looking for this one. So I'm so glad I found it here. It's very similar to the Maharashtrian poha nylon chiura, but with like a burst of kothmir flavor. That's why it's also green. Then I got a whole lot of mukwas. So I've got these two mixed soft packets and then I got dried mango and dried ginger. And now coming to all the khakras, like there's a lot of different variety in khakras. Now this one is with cow ghee. So these are not going to be that dry. There were different flavors in this. So I picked up jeera, then I picked up masala. So I have two of masala actually. And then I have more smaller mini khakras. So this one is a vada pav flavor, had to get this. This one is a kachori flavor. Seemed really interesting. I don't think I've ever seen a kachori flavored khakra box. And this one is a dabeli flavor, so might as well. 
then we have achari khakra these are also smaller ones smaller than the previous one as well uh, achari khakra i think i've had before but these ones just looked more red and more flavorful so i got these then i forgot to show you guys i got chana jor as well this is nylon chana jor so usually chana jor is slightly thicker but this is a little bit thinner and then i got chana as well this is garlic chana this is just sada khara chana with a little bit of salt and i also picked up sukhdi sukhdi is a gujarati mithai i'm sure you guys know so i personally am not overly fond of it but somebody really likes it so i got this this was the entire stash of namkeens and farsans and now i'm going to be showing you what shopping i did so for shopping i decided to go to sindhi market sindhi market is a very very famous cloth market here it's mostly famous for wholesale stuff but one of you will find shops and vendors who will be ready to give you a few pieces this is the perfect market to shop if you're going in a group so if there's like five six of you and you guys see a particular style of top you can get it in different colors sizes and they might give it to you at a wholesale rate the wholesale rates are very very attractive like i saw this one pant which was for 95 rupees but you had to get like six pieces minimum so i couldn't shop there but then i actually found one shop selling bed sheets these were again wholesale but they agreed to give me just one piece at a wholesale price so this is a queen size bed sheet i'm not going to open the whole thing because it's going to be tough for me to put it back together but i really like the fabric and this cost me 550 rupees so one bed sheet and two pillow covers i really like the print and the fabric then we went to this one store which was inside like this whole industrial area of sorts and over there i actually liked a lot of kurtis and stuff so first i got this quad set this is the kurta and this is the pant and the fabric was really good the sizes are full on chore sizes i would normally wear a medium or a large but here he recommended that i take an xl or a double xl and this quad set cost me 450 rupees and i thought that was a very very good price firstly i like the color i like the print 450 for a quad set which is slightly more dressy like slightly i thought it was pretty okay then i got a kurta this is very pretty it's a beautiful light turquoise color with some silver detailing and this one cost me 390 rupees this is only kurta again the fabric is amazing and then i got a dress this i can actually open and show you guys so this is a white dress and it's got a little bit of embroidery and it's got this tassel work and it's got like this print all over it's a really cute dress you can even wear this as a tunic this was expensive expensive this cost me 850 rupees but i like the quality of the fabric and i really liked the print and the colors so i got this but it's still not that expensive if i think of it like in what i would pay for it in a boutique or something then we have this pant which actually belongs to my team member but i'm also showing you guys the fabric is so good it's supremely soft and it's got this nice cutesy print going on this cost 250 rupees and i wish they had more colors and more designs in it than probably even i would have got It. then she also picked up another quad set in this really nice uh, kind of a rose brown color It has a nice lemon bottom with a little bit of embroidery design this also cost 450 and then there's this kurta i really like the print and the colors this is very me but uh, it's not for me and this one cost uh, i think 300 or 350 rupees very very nice fabric i have done a full shopping video of the lal darwaza market in ahmedabad long back so i'm going to leave a link to that in the description box below but if you're looking for good wholesale shopping then sindhi market is good come in a group and just be ready to be shocked by the prices and now i'm actually really excited because i'm going to a place that i've wanted to visit throughout so many trips but have never gotten the chance and finally i am today The minute you enter Manik Chowk, the place will overwhelm you. There are so many different stalls, and two or three things that I saw people eating here a lot are sandwich, pav bhaji, and dosa. Literally, every corner has innumerable stalls of these, and I have succumbed to the pressure. I am sitting near one sandwich and one pav bhaji stall, and that's exactly what I'm going to be eating. So this is the vegetable toast, and right now, looking at the amount of butter, I'm getting shocked. But if you look at the amount of cheese that they add in every sandwich, you will be really really shocked so when i told the guy that i want just plain toast no cheese he was like saadi saadi khaoge he couldn't believe it but i just cannot do with so much of cheese right now in fact this butter is also going to be slightly off but i feel like there are three slices of bread here chutney is amazing it's not overly spicy it's very similar to mumbai toast but their chutney flavor feels slightly different it's a little bit more heavy on uh, garlic and a little bit of mint 
This is dish number two, pav bhaji. Again, this is a full of butter inside the bhaji. And actually, when he was taking my order, he asked, "Tail me banao ya butter me banao?" I was like, "Butter me." And this is what happened. And they also give a little bit of chutney on the side. I think this is garlic chutney. I'm not sure. We'll find out. They are of course buttered to perfection. Significantly different than Mumbai pav bhaji. It's not as tangy, and I feel like I can feel the taste of the vegetables even more. I'm enjoying this. The amount of food that I've consumed in Ahmedabad is. Little bit of garlic chutney, not overly spicy. No matter how much you wipe your hands, they'll still be greasy because the amount of butter and everything is too much. The pav bhaji cost one sixty. The sandwich cost hundred rupees. Prices are not like dirt cheap, but it's okay. Everything on the menu of Balan Dosa is cheese. So this is the cheese section, of course, cheese. And there's paneer in the fusion section, and there's cheese, 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 cheese. Sada and the regular dosas are on the next side. Pineapple toast sandwich, cheese jam toast sandwich, gujra sandwich, alu matar toast. And he convinced me to have the gotala dosa. I just saw it getting ready, and I am shook. I have to show you guys how they make it. There is literally everything in this. This is a very very thick gravy at this point. There is cheese, paneer. I don't even remember what else. In spite of that color and so many other things inside, the only thing I can taste sadly is cheese. I mean, for anybody who loves cheese, it's great. You know, it's got like a flavored feel. Let's try it with a sambar. Mm. This has the flavor. Not bad. Not bad at all. So this costs two hundred and seventy rupees, and this is heavy. Like every bite, you can feel. a ton of cheese getting into your system so it's best to probably share this finally ending it with this pan shot you actually also get jamun shots here but i'm not the biggest fan of jamun so i'm having the pan shot yeah i can get all of that gulkand and soft 40 rupees per shot So it's time for my Ahmedabad food journey to end but I'm actually going back to Mumbai by train and this is the Vista Dome. The minute I got to the station I knew I had to get a porter this time because my bag was just too heavy. I've been traveling for a while. It always ends up hurting my back when I'm you know trying to lift the bag too much. And you guys also saw the amount I shopped and the steps which go down would have been difficult. The good thing is that when you're getting inside the station that time there's an escalator and the minute I got down from the step when I was right next to my platform from which is platform number 7 there was the ev coach it's a 6 am train i cannot even tell you guys how difficult it was to wake up because last night we were at manik chowk now i can't wait for the train to get started and honestly just be back home the reason i chose this journey because i kind of like vista dome rides i have shared with you guys my ride in lonavla as well it's very comfy and it would be a little bit scenic maybe going back to mumbai in this weather and watching everything there's also one day bharat that goes from ahmedabad to mumbai but somehow my timings were not matching with that so i took this one i don't think i got a chance to pre book my meals so i got some poha hopefully this will be the gujarati style poha all through my breakfast i was enjoying this view outside the greenery outside is of a different level it's so lush it's monsoon season that's actually one of the reasons why i took this journey because i kind of thought it will be beautifully green and all of my work that i had in ahmedabad is done i'm just going back home and this kind of a journey with this view makes it a very very relaxing experience <music> Is a train journey even complete without cutlets? I don't think so. So that's exactly what I'm having now. Little heart-shaped ones. They're slightly burnt. Usually they are, but I kind of like them that way. I also realized that there's a little bit of fennel seeds in between, totally amping up the flavor. And the fact that it's got potato, a lot of peas, and a hint of beetroot. I don't know. I cannot imagine train journeys without this. And also, it's raining outside. It's become really cold even inside the train. So I think this combo of like watching the rain, enjoying this, all I need is chai. So 
I'm pretty close to Mumbai now. I am going to be reaching Vapi and then Borivali and Mumbai Central. About seven hours it takes to reach, and the journey is really comfortable. Only issue is that here I didn't get an option to book my meals, or maybe I missed it. You do keep getting like those, you know, typical train snacks, but now it's like close to lunch time, and I am feeling supremely hungry. Next time I'm doing a Vista Dome of this duration, I'll definitely keep my snacks ready, or maybe like a little lunch. But yeah, overall this journey is. Super extremely convenient if i had the luxury of time i would pick this one over a flight journey as much as possible so i hope you guys enjoyed my amdabad vlog i absolutely enjoyed my time in amdabad i've tried to explore different places as much as possible but some gems just had to be revisited so make sure you watch all of the amdabad videos for any kind of food and shopping uh, places and if you enjoyed this video then hit that like button share it with your friends and family and subscribe to my channel and i will see you in my next video Bye